Uh, Mitch, we're bold today. Um, what is it about you and the pink ball that just seems to go so well together? Uh, don't know. Just got asked that before. Um, well, I don't know. I think I've always thought it's the pink ball behaves a bit more like a white ball than a red. Um, I'm not sure if that means anything with my bowling, but um, yeah, I guess I've just had a bit of a knack for taking wickets with it. So um, yeah, it's not that I've changed my game plan because of the pink ball or anything like that. Um, my role's still the same. It's obviously been a little bit different this week with no no Josh or Pat, but yeah, let's keep it simple and try and take wickets. And of course, England didn't select a strike spin ball coming into this game. Can you talk through how valuable it was having Nathan Lyon today? Because uh, obviously he was holding up one end pretty well throughout the day. Yeah, Nathan was fantastic. Um, I mean, he's he's been world class for a long time. He's 400 test wickets. He, he knows what he's doing, no matter the colour of the ball. So. Um, I thought he was, was fantastic, especially in that second session. Um, well, yeah, I think he bowled pretty much the whole session. So for us quicks, just to, to bowl in partnership with him and, and knowing that he was going to do a fantastic job, I think was was, um, was pretty key in how well we went in that second session. So, yeah, in terms of, of our makeup, Nath's obviously a big part of our bowling attack. And, and I think we saw even with, with Joe in the first innings and again tonight, there's a little bit of purchase there for a spinner and, and Nathan took full advantage of that. Can you just talk us through, Mitch, um, how impressed you've been by Cam Green's bowling in the last two tests and what the dynamic he adds uh, to your attack, particularly when you're lacking two of your established quicks for this game? Yeah, it's been huge. He's, a, he's obviously a fantastic talent for a young young fellow, a big, big kid. But, um, yeah, I think we saw that last summer, how valuable he could be to our attack when you've got someone that's, what is he, nearly seven foot, who bowls some pretty decent click, get extra bounce from that height. Um, and this summer he's coming to his own again, taking, obviously taking his first wicket now and a little bit of confidence behind him. Um, he just complements the attack really well when you've got, you know, obviously he hasn't quite come off with the bat just yet, but we saw some of that talent last summer and obviously through shield cricket. So um, an all-rounder of that ability who can bowl quick, can get bounce, get key wickets, um, it's, a, it's a huge plus to our attack. Um, hey, Mitch, um, just the dynamics for you of being the lead pacer with like, you know, one guy having played two tests and the other guy on debut, how was that for you? Yeah, it, um, I guess it was a little bit different for, for Nathan and I, and I think um, we kind of mentioned it a little bit in that second session. Obviously, we didn't quite bowl the way we wanted to in that first one and sort of let it slip a little bit on the scoreboard and I probably searched a little bit for wickets, but um, I think the way... We all came out in that second session. Uh, I think Nathan and I probably took it on a little bit on ourselves, being the, obviously the two experienced ones in the attack. Not to say that you know the other three are hugely talented and, and did a great job today as well, but we've obviously played a few test matches. And, and um, I think the way, as I said before, Nathan bowling in partnership with all the quicks was was a big key to how we how we were successful in that second session. Uh, and just about um, how you built up your rhythm, uh, test rhythm, this summer compared to say the last two seasons two seasons ago you worked a little on the action um, can you just talk us through that and there was that one spell you bowled at the Ian Healy Oval where you were really steaming in and from that point on it looks like you've really taken it up yeah um, I guess it probably started through the World Cup um, I sort of got out of four weeks of quarantine and, and sort of lost my run up a bit so um, it took me a few weeks of the World Cup to find that um, so I did a lot of work with Andrew McDonald through through the World Cup, through our quarantine back home. Um, so I, I, I guess it's taken a little bit of time, but I'm glad that I found that rhythm, obviously through the first two tests. So yeah, it felt really good through that middle session today. And um, I haven't tried to change anything really. It's just more finding that rhythm and, and um, I guess the rhythm of a run up, which plays a big part in, in my airspeed and, and how I balanced at the crease. So that's probably all that's sort of, been the focus through the, the build up to this series. Mitch, um, just that, uh, well, I think Cam bowled a couple of overs before the first break and bowled a little bit through the break and then came out and looked like it kind of it all clicked for him. Um, I guess you know from your own experience when you've had injuries and you're coming back, sometimes that rhythm and that, you know, your top pace as well, it, it doesn't necessarily come easily or as soon as you get back on the park. From what yeah, I bowled today? And I guess Cam getting into his rhythm um, in that spell. Yeah, I think he's been fantastic through the first two tests and he showed again today what a huge talent he is and, and he can take big wickets. So, um, 
Yeah, I think, as you mentioned, it's a bit of a confidence thing for him, but he's only young. He's, what is his sixth test or something, and, and he's taking his first wicket and he's bowling good pace. He's probably still growing as a kid too. So, yeah, I, I think we'll see him evolve over his next few years as a, as a cricketer, not only as a bowler, but, yeah, once he found that rhythm today, he bowled some really high-quality stuff. Obviously, to get the wicket of Joe um, almost sort of set us on our way after after our first session. So, yeah, I, I, you'd have to ask him how he felt, but he looked fantastic with the ball today. Um, Mitchell, was there any um, thought given to following them on tonight? I'm not the captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was no chat with you guys about how you were feeling or, you know, yeah. Not really. Um, it was more a discussion whether we take the new ball straight away or, or keep going with, with Gazza and the old ball. So, um yeah, I guess in terms of where it sits now, I think we hold all the cards with when we want to bowl, how big a lead we want to have. Um, obviously, the night sessions are a, are a big one, or certainly we, we see them as a big one, as a big um, striking session, if you like, with a new ball and, and conditions. So, um, yeah, certainly we, we've got a few options on the table now, being, being batting. Um, and then obviously it would have been a shorter session in the second innings if we'd sent them back in. So I wasn't part of any thought process. Um, but, yeah, I think that's where it sits at the minute. We've, we're holding all the cards. Mate, Tom, just before, on the eve of the test, um, did you have a sleepless night on Wednesday night, you know, given you were at the restaurant, or was there any time the next morning where you thought you might not be able to play yourself? <laughs> the spinner didn't sleep. Uh, I slept quite fine. There wasn't much I could do about it after after it was done. So, um, yeah, it was just fortunate we were sitting outside. Um, it was almost a bit of a piss take because Pat didn't reply to a message. So we we thought we'd sit away from him and sit outside. So it's um, it's been a lucky one. Uh, Mitch, can you run us through um, your wicket of Josh Butler? Because I think you got him on the fifteenth ball, pretty much with what, what seemed like Plan A, angling across him, and eventually. He sneaked one. Yeah, that's about it, really. <laughs> there wasn't much more to it. Uh, it was a, I, I guess we saw that um, in the Gabba going across him. Uh, and I thought that the pink ball through that middle period was just starting to fade a little bit. Uh, it, was, it wasn't was reversing, but it seemed to fade away with the, the shiny side. So I was just trying to go across him. And, and I thought, we, as I said before, that the partnerships with Gaz and the Quicks I think built up that pressure which we spoke about in the break so for me it was just trying to bowl a good length and and not let him get away and and still pepper that that line away from him that we saw in the, the Gabba test so fortunate that it came off today but there wasn't too much more to the plan. So we're just going back to Wednesday night were you actually aware of what was happening with Pat at, at the time and as a follow up has it changed any of the protocols around the, the team for this test? Oh, I we don't go out for dinner now. The, the test goes until 10.30 or whatever it is anyway. But, um, no, we weren't until we got back to the hotel and, and sort of knew what was going on. So, um, as far as I'm aware, the protocols were the same. No one broke any rules. Um, we're all still obviously aware that things can be very unfortunate and you get stuck in a few places. Um, I guess guys might be more aware, obviously, in the next two venues, but... As far as it goes, it's it's closed off now. We're here to win a test match. Um, Mick, just going back to that follow-on thing, I think it was this test, Ashes test, four years ago, there was a bit of discussion um, because the bowlers weren't consulted about the decision. Is it, has that changed? Or do bowlers do get consulted? Or normally now you've got a bowling captain, will that be, become a change, do you think? I've got a bowling captain now, we'll have to talk to him. Um, no. Uh, it seemed like Smithy was pretty happy with, with the way he wanted to go tonight, so... Um, I don't know if there was some chat in the break or um, off field. Uh, there was not too much of a chat between us out there. He was pretty pretty set in his ways and, and we weren't going to fight him on that. So, yeah, as I said before, I think in the position of the game we are, we do hold all the cards and, and we've got plenty of options to take on the table now. Mitch, I know, I know there's a lot made about you and the people on the lights and whatnot, but do you feel like you've nailed the art of bowling with it during the day and how to get something out of it during the day? Because you look what you're able to do with it compared to... Well, I guess even England was sort of bumping in short because they couldn't get a lot out of it. Other countries do. Do you feel like you've, you've worked it out during the day? 
don't know if I've worked it out. Um, yeah, my, my plan of attack hasn't really changed over all the pink ball games anyway, or throughout my cricket anyway. But um, I guess we've got a bit of a luxury of having played what is it eight tests or something with it. So, um, and they've all been well, bar one, they've been here. So, yeah. I, I don't really know how to answer it. I don't think I've nailed it, but um, we've all got, I guess, a certain plan to it. And, and when we work in those partnerships like we did today, and, and certainly I felt like I was in a really good rhythm and, and sort of hit those links that you wanted to, whether it didn't really matter what colour of the ball it was. But And then you've got Nath when he's doing that at the other end. It, it's easy to run off. Um, so, yeah, I might have taken a few wickets, but... Uh, that's the role that I play. I might go for a few extra runs sometimes, but I'm trying to bowl that full length. And, and I thought, if we look at day one, there's only 5% of the balls or something. England were hitting the stumps. So you learn from that as an opposition when you see that. But we've also played a fair bit with the pink ball. So I, I think the quicks that we've got in this game generally bowl that fuller length anyway and generally hit the stumps more. And I've, obviously that showed, it came to fruition in the second session. Um, yeah, hopefully that continues in the second innings and then for the Hobart test as well.